Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Uh, this time it's not necessarily a combo tutorial, and it's like a discussion, but also kind of a combo tutorial. It's definitely not a deck profile. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be revisiting a strategy, a deck that is one of my favorites. In fact, my second favorite of all time, second only to Dragoonities, and that is World Chalice. A deck that I have not messed with in a serious fashion in over two years at this point. The last time I took this deck remotely seriously was for the 200th YCS in September of 2018, if I'm remembering correctly. And effectively, like, that was the last time I took this deck any form of seriously, because, like, I can even, like, I'm still using, like, the extra deck sleeves that I was using for that event, which were these Chaos Emperor uh, Asia Judge sleeves. Um, I haven't, like, changed much about the deck at all. Uh, I've kept the core around, obviously, because I love it and I want to mess with it, you know, in a couple of instances, but... Basically, the deck just kept getting worse. It kept getting indirectly hit by things. Uh, the deck's win condition reverted back to what it was during the beginning of the deck's existence, which was just Ningirsu draw three, and maybe Saryuja draw into a Kyoto waterfront, and then try to stick a Gamma Seal, and that was it. The deck didn't really have any room to expand. Um, and that's one of the things that I am like the harshest critic about, with a deck that I'm trying to play long term, um, like Dragoonity or World Chalice or Ritual Beast, if the deck has no capability to like, like, form and adapt in a little bit of a different way into the format, then I just shelf it for a while until it's a little bit better suited. I think that time is now. I have done a little bit of thinking, some shower thoughts, if you will, what I call them. Thoughts I just have while I'm just standing in the shower or walking through the park or going to the gym or whatever. Where I'll just start thinking about certain interactions uh, that maybe other decks are doing. Other decks that are historically successful or currently successful. And see if those are capable of being implemented into a deck that I really like playing. And I think that I've done something like that with World Chalice. So that is what I'm here to share with you today. Now I'm going to show you a couple of like base combo sequences but mostly this is like a discussion of like just where i've been sort of taking my thought process with this deck because this is like the first time i've seriously brewed with like the theory for this deck in a long time and it actually has me like pretty excited like i'm i've been having a blast for like the first time in a long time with this uh deck but basically what i came to the conclusion of was that remember Emancipator in summer that deck that we knew was the best deck and we all kind of was annoyed by it. Well, what if we took elements from that deck that made it so successful and put it into World Chalice? What if we inject that straight into the World Chalice veins? And what if we have a way to actually make it augment the World Chalice strategy in a favorable way? That's sort of what I'm messing around with. So haven't refined it down to the point where I'd be willing to share a deck list or not yet, but I've definitely been messing around with it and the base concept and trying to figure out some certain things. Based core functionality of what I'm looking at is playing the cards that Admancipator was using back in summer to make Needle Fiber, or excuse me, Christian Hawk Fibrax, before normal summoning, or at least using a low impact normal summon to do it. Basically, they were using it to access either Block Dragon and using it as a starter, or they were making Raptite. We can use it to do a few different things in World Chalice. Uh, we can use it to insulate the combos from hand traps by making Herald of the Arclight before normal summoning if we open with Tuner plus Special Summon Extender. We have ways of using it to do things like make Transmodify live to mean that we sort of have a pseudo replacement for Brilliant Fusion because Brilliant Fusion was a huge consistency enabler because it allowed you to extend it was a free extender uh, and then it got you two cards like lee which you could transmodify away or it just straight up got you to venus if you opened lee instead these cards can allow you to make transmodify live um it's just it's got a whole bunch of stuff going for it it augments the one card venus combo to make the one card venus combo a combo that i can actually respect and call good if you're using it as a follow-up to making you know this live the one card venus combo is something that you can perform but i think that it's terrible and statistically, you should never be performing it because you have a higher chance of opening Venus plus any extender in your deck, even if that extender is just a World Chalice vanilla, you have a higher chance of opening that than opening just Venus and four blanks by itself. But anyway, 
the baseline of what is making this a thing that I'm looking at doing is Unexpected Die and Adhara and Shadebringer Dan, in this instance, already have natural synergy with the deck. Uh, Adhara, you can just special summon uh, for free or special summon it when you control just normals. This deck plays a lot of normals. Unexpected Die, we could play this in the past. We have played this in the past. But this time, it can get Angel Trumpeter, so you have six cards that are getting you tuners without normal summoning. Um, and then Shade Burgundy and Shade Burgundy. We've always been playing this card. This card's great. Uh, this card is special summon it and make an Imduck. But so, basically, these cards play very well with uh, the rest of your deck. Like, no joke. Uh, they play very well with opening, like, two-card combo plus Venus. Because Venus is a one-card combo now, but it's terrible on its own. But if you're following this this uh, two card combo with normal summon Venus, or with transmodify, suddenly it gets a lot better because of things that are going to be doing. Uh, I'll be showing you effectively uh, that make it a bit better. Uh, this also functions sort of as a Venus. Uh, you can open a two card combo into uh, Fibrax without normal summoning and World Legacy World Chalice, and this functions as a Venus because this is four monsters. So then you could just tribute for world legacy world chalice and then play uh you could also you know we're getting herald of the arc light so we get insulated from hand traps stuff like that let me just show you let me show you an instance of what i'm talking about uh first one i'll show you is actually one of my favorites uh which is adhara unexpected die and world legacy world chalice uh unexpected die is necessary for this one because of what we're going to be doing um with it uh if it's shade and dean you have to play a little bit differently uh, but so, in this instance, like, you get the unexpected die. This is where the point where I just, like, show you loose, freeform combos. Um, like, base, like, forms of them. And, like, you get to see what I'm talking about. Uh, because this is a very rambly and sort of just not structured video at all. Uh, but hopefully it'll lead to more structured videos in the future. But special Adhara because we have the Angel Trumpeter out. Uh, and then Synchro into, excuse me, <laughs> Linkro Summon. Into Christron Hawk Fibrax. Crystal and Hauke Fibrax, our target in this deck is what makes Transmodify live. Herald of the Orange Light. This card is a tuner. It's a level 2 tuner. So we get to utilize this by like going all the way through the Link Cross play, Metal Marcher play, and all that. And this is a Transmodify target. So it's like, it's really good. But so, Hauke Fibrax into uh, Link Cross. Uh, Link Cross summon two tokens. And then Synchro the token and the herald of the orange light away into uh martial metal marcher martial metal marcher bring back the orange light and then you can like you can see from here where we're at is we're at um we're at four monsters and we haven't normal summoned yet you can tribute this token for world legacy world chalice and that's effectively like venus plus shine ball um and you haven't used venus yet which is huge if you have Transmodify, Transmodify can be used on this after you make Herald. Um, if you didn't open with, sh with uh, Unexpected Die for Angel Trumpeter, this is the play that you'd be doing, getting uh, the Herald of Orange Light back, and you'd have to tribute this for World Legacy World Chalice, and then you get to play. It's like opening Venus. But if you did open Unexpected Die for Angel Trumpeter, this is where the play can change for the better, um, is that you can revive Angel Trumpeter off of the Marshall Metal Marcher. And now, because this vanilla is here, uh, it specifically allows us to be able to make Herald of the uh, Arclight in this instance of the combo. And then we get to make uh, Imduk with this. And we haven't normal summoned yet, so we can tribute this Link Cross for World Legacy World Chalice using the additional normal summon Imduk gives us. So we haven't normal summoned yet, meaning we can do a full play here of Imduk plus World Legacy World Chalice into Aurum. World Legacy World Chalice triggers summoning uh, Lee and uh, World Legacy, or not World Legacy, World Chalice Guard Dragon into these zones. The Lee will trigger to add a Beckoned, in this case, to my hand. And we can step up into an Ngirsu draw two, all while being protected by Herald of uh, the Arclight. Where if you don't make Herald, in either of the instances, uh, you could do an Ingersu draw three. It functions like Venus. But so in this case, it'd be Aurum pop the uh, Guard Dragon to revive the uh, Hauka Fibrax into one of its zones to step up the link rating of what you have to be a bit more uh, nice into uh, what you're doing. 
uh, banish the guard dragon to bring back the angel trumpeter here, and then link this into Imduk, and then you get to link Imduk and Hauka Fibrax into the Ningirsu right here, and then chain link one Ningirsu, chain link two Imduk to special this, and then you get to draw two cards, right? So like it allows you to play a lot more hands out a lot more effectively. Um, there's hands where you can do this with Venus. It makes the Venus play really good. Let me show you the Venus play, actually. This is, like I said, this is going to be a very poorly structured video if there's any structure to it at all. But if you like the ramblings, rantings, and ravings of a madman as he, uh, as he uncovers the secrets of his world, then you'll be right at home because that's, that's what's happening here. So, let's say uh, Adhara and the worst option... Uh, Shade Brigandine and Venus, right? This play is really good. This card combination is insanely good for strictly the reason that, like, the fact that this accesses another fairy is huge. So, I'm just going to show you this play. This play is nice. Um, and then, like, we'll see where the video is at from there. Like, this is quite literally not structured in any way, shape, or form of, like, a way that I would like to put out content. But whatever, dude, like, I'm just excited to be messing with these cards again in a way that I can proudly say might be good, right? But so, special Adhara, special uh, Shade Brigandine, make the Needle Fiber. Basically, if you're wanting to play a deck that is not the best, if you have a capability of implementing things that more successful decks have done into your deck you can try and utilize that to make your deck better. And if it has a good form of synergy to it, then it only gets better from there. Uh, but so, Halka Fibrax for Orange Light, uh, Halka Fibrax into Link Cross, Link Cross for the two tokens, Orange Light and Token into Martial Metal Marcher, Marcher for Orange Light, and then uh, the Token and the Marcher into Herald of Arc Light. So the whole point is to get access to more cards uh, in an easy way that lets the deck play more. And then it's also to get this, because we're trying not to get hand trapped, we're trying not to get into beard. Um, we're trying to do a whole host of things, right? We're trying to we're trying to tell our opponent to cease. Don't touch me. You're probably filthy. But anyway, so from here we have three cards on board. Um, and we have a card that like Makes it awkward for us to do certain plays, but not really. We can play around all of them, and then we can normal summon Venus. And Venus is a one-card play in this deck, but we've augmented it by giving it access to different cards that we can banish for, like, ever or whatever. So, normal summon Venus, Venus effect, Venus effect for a Shine Ball. We get to make Link Cross and Herald of Orange Light, because they are both lights, into Union Carrier. And then we get to use Union Carrier on this Shine Ball to equip an Eva to it from our deck. Now, the reason the one-card Venus play, in my mind, sucks is because you always have to banish two for it. If you don't have any extender, if you're playing just Venus, no other cards, you have to banish two Shine Balls. Or you have to link away with Venus and banish Venus and a Shine Ball because you need to get Lee plus either uh, uh, Lily Bell or Wadapon because you need the extra card in play or else you can't do any combo. The problem is, is that this deck is loaded full of really good extenders that specifically are meant to abuse you, like, having Shine Balls and Venus on board, um, and Shine Balls in circulation. So if you're banishing Shine Balls, your cards like Pot of Avarice that you're playing three of, Exodius that you're playing two or three of, Digesto Emerald that's in your extra deck, uh, those cards suddenly lose a ton of value. And so if you can augment the Venus play in any way, to make it to where you don't need to banish more than one fairy, and if you can make it to where you don't have to banish any shine balls at all, then it's fantastic. It's really good. And that's what we're doing here. We don't need the extra monsters because we've got extra stuff on board already, and we've augmented the play because we've gotten access to this fairy that's a throwaway banish, so we don't have to banish any shine balls for Eva. So we link the shine ball that Eva is equipped to into Imduk, the uh, World Chalice Dragon, and the Eva just banishes the Herald of Orange Light that we got off Needle Fiber. And that gets us access to Lee the World Chalice Fairy. So then we get to use Venus again, paying for another 5, getting this. And then we get to link these two away into a throwaway Link 2. 
Uh, I'm not sure why the throwaway Link 2 in this extra deck is Nightmare Cerberus. I guess that just means I've never needed Nightmare Cerberus in any of my other decks. This could easily be Nightmare Phoenix. If you're using Nightmare Phoenix, you just want to reverse the, the board space you're working on. This would be here, Venus would be here, and this would be there, and Phoenix would be pointing this way. It just has to be a throwaway Link 2. It could be Proxy Dragon for all I care. doesn't matter. It just has to be a Link that's pointing at least sideways with one arrow. But so Imduk linked away, gets to special summon Lee, and Lee gets to add War Legacy World Chalice. We have one more Shine Ball left in the deck, so we get to use Venus to get this Shine Ball, and then we get to link this Shine Ball away into another Imduk. We get to additional normal, so we're going to tribute the Lee for World Legacy World Chalice, and this is clogging space, so we're going to send it to Grave to add Lee back to hand. And then we get to go Imduk and World Legacy World Chalice into or and then the world legacy world chalice gets to trigger and we get to special summon two beckons from our deck and so like what's cool is that like orum can revive any card as well so if you make this herald and your opponent hand traps you and you negate with herald at this point you could orum back the herald it does reduce the amount of cards you can draw off in gear suit to two because you'll never be able to get to the three unless you like have an insane hand and you start working on the other side of the board but like it it's cool you can bring back herald with orum but so you get two beckons, you overlay the two beckons into Digesto Emerald. And like, keep in mind, this would just make Halka Fibrax without a normal summon and normal summon Venus. You could also do this with Transmodify. Uh, it just takes away one extender, um, or not one extender, it takes away one card from the board. So you have to, well, no, you don't have to do anything because then you have a space for this to summon. Um, but anyway, so you Digesto Emerald. And you shuffle back your three Shine Balls because we got to preserve them into the deck, right? And then you get to go Venus for Shine Ball, link the Emerald and the Shine Ball away into Ib, and then you get to Venus for a Shine Ball again, link this Shine Ball into our last Imduk, and then you get to go uh, Imduk and uh, the Cerberus in this case into Ningirsu. We have to draw a card off the Digesto Emerald as well. Um, then Gear Suit, Chainlink 1, Imduk, Chainlink 2, Special, this Lee, and then you get to draw three cards. So you have two other cards in your starting hand left over at this point. Uh, you drew one off Emerald, three off of Ningirsu. You still have a Shine Ball left in your deck at this point. You have not used a card like World Chalice Guard Dragon, so that's a card you can draw into that extends you as well. Uh, you haven't used Orum in this case, so you can revive something. Uh, like, this deck has just a lot of step-up capability now. Like, you can actually, like, just do a lot with this. Because you already have a negate insulating you. Um, because you got access to an additional fairy and additional cards on your board. It means it means the one card Venus uh, play is augmented to a level that it's really good. Um, and makes it to where all of your superior extenders like Pot of Avarice and Exodius are really, really good. Uh, and you could just like... This is sort of like where it becomes open-ended. You can do whatever you want with this. You could throw cards into a 3 or 4 material Lapalooza. You can make a lib... Uh, getting uh, World Legacy Sorrows access. Uh, you can make a couple Saryujas, try to draw into Kyoto Waterfront. Uh, you're going to be drawing into cards that are hopefully like extenders like these. Uh, Pot of Avarice has tons of targets. You can put, uh, like, you can draw more cards. You're playing three of this, obviously, because Venus plus Avarice is an amazing play. Same thing with Exodius. You're playing two or three of it because Venus plus Exodius is nuts. These are the best extenders in your deck. Um,. So, like, you can just literally just keep funneling through cards. Uh, you could Avarice or Exodius back your Digesto Emerald and then make it again and put back Shine Balls again. So, effectively, you get to just abuse Venus with this deck like crazy. Um, so, yeah. I've revisited World Chalice. Uh, expect some refined combo tutorials and maybe a deck profile in the near future. Um, hope you enjoyed this rambling uh, and like I said, ranting and raving of a madman, because that is what I am. It is, it is very early in the morning and I have been messing about with some certain things. Uh, and yeah, that's sort of it. That's all. I just, I'm, this is sort of like the, the most fun videos for me to make. The ones where I'm just excited about shit. The ones where I'm just excited about talking about a deck that I enjoy, which is, I enjoy the cards. I enjoy this archetype. It is my second favorite deck of all time. But unfortunately, it just hasn't been positioned well for me to do anything with it. Now, I feel like it's positioned well enough that we can mess around with it to a certain degree. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Expect some more refined videos about this in the future. But other than that, thank you so much for your time. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you got this far in the video, give me a hashtag World Chalice in the comments down below. But other than that, take care, guys. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.